Hey everyone, welcome to my channel techbeast.org. Technology has changed our lifestyle a lot. Smartphones and smart devices has become a part of our life and we all are connected to each other via internet. Thanks to the World Wide Web, which showed us the full potential of the internet and how it is used to find what you need from the web. We all have heard about the term IoT, which is Internet of Things or the Connected Things. But have you ever heard about the term WOT, the Web of Things? Have you ever thought of browsing and accessing the devices at your home or office from your browser just like how we are browsing every day? Today we are going to discuss something new about Web of Things and how Web of Things is going to complement Internet of Things. Let's get into the topic. What is Internet of Things? So the Internet of Things is a system of physical objects. So the physical object can be anything. So it can be your car, it can be your uh, it can be your home, it can be your water your kettle, it can be your electric fan. So whatever the devices uh, you are considering as a physical object. So it can be anything. So that can be discovered, monitored, controlled or interacted with or by an electronic devices. So you can use your smartphone to control some devices or you can write a program to make the devices talk to themselves that communicate over various networking interfaces. So networking interfaces here, uh, it can be Bluetooth, it can be Wi-Fi, it can be Zigbee. So whatever, whatever the protocol, whatever the networking interfaces, uh, the device is meant to be worked with. So it can be anything. And eventually can be connected to the wider internet. So whatever the devices is connected to the internet, it will become a part of the web. And we are able to discover, monitor, control, and we can interact with this device. So, so that's the simple definition of Internet of Things. You can search in Google. There are a lot and a lot and a lot of definitions around. So this makes more sense uh, to me. So, so this is the definition of IoT. So in Internet of Things, uh, things are the uh, basic uh, element. So what is a thing? So we need to understand what is a thing first. A thing is a physical object that's digitally augmented with a sensor, an actuator, uh, some computation and with some communication interfaces so basically it's a physical object so that's digitally augmented with some sensors actuators computation and communication interfaces the sensors can be temperature motion or whatever actuators are basically uh, leds and motors so meaning it's on and off state so computation meaning a physical object which is running some algorithms in it in order to help some other application can be anything and it's a communication a physical object that's digitally augmented with communication interfaces so meaning uh, with some wi-fi BLE, zigbee enabled devices or a combination of above items so all these smart devices today comes with a combination of uh, the above aforementioned items for example a smart sensor a smart so what why we call it smart and when we will call it a smart sensor a sensor can sense the data it can perform some computation and it can send the data over some communication interfaces okay so it can be a combination of all the above items so basically a thing can be anything from an rfid qr code to the devices which makes a smart city okay so all these uh, physical objects with some capabilities uh, are referred to as a thing okay so then in order to understand uh, iot and wot in a better way so we need to uh, know what is this osi so osi stands for open system interconnections so we need to know how this osi work first so in order to differentiate iot and wot in order to understand it uh, very clear so let's say if you maybe you, if you are an it professional if you are surfing google or if you are if you are good in networks uh, maybe you would have uh, came across this osi layers uh, so there are seven osi layers basically so physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer session layer presentation layer and application layer so basically um, in in network uh, uh, scenario so whatever the applications whatever the system we are building so it will be uh, it will be a combination of all these seven layers together working together okay so let me explain all these layers one by one in detail so so you can you can understand well how this iot is working and how uh, web of things is going to work okay so let me start with physical layer first so what is a physical layer so what is the role of this uh, physical layer so basically physical layer transmit a raw bit streams uh, via physical medium so uh, what it does basically it, it just convert all the bit of data uh, into a packets so in network normally uh, 
we call it packets a packet uh, to send a packet from a source to a destination okay so basically it's, it's a physical link so it can be a cable it it can be using uh, it can be wired or wireless using wi-fi or whatever so basically uh, what uh, these layers do is one layer will always serve another layer okay and one layer uh, that that same layer will be served by the layer below okay so that's that's how this uh, the whole flow works so when it comes to the physical layer now it's going to serve the data link layer so what it does is the data link layer it reads the mac address from the data packet so for example switches are the good example for this so in network switches so it just read the mac address from the data packets so then uh, the third layer is the network layer this one reads the IP address from the data packets. Example, your home routers. So whenever you connect a device, the router will assign an IP address uh, through this DHCP process. So, so that's those kind of uh, routers, uh, whatever the devices, uh, we are getting an IP address. That's because of this network layer. Okay, that's the function of this network layer. Then it comes the transport layer. So transport layer is basically it takes care of communication between two hosts. Okay, so we all are familiar with the TCP and UDP protocol. So so normally in Internet of Things, uh, if it is a uh, if it's a sensitive data and you need acknowledgments from the uh, between the client and server, so we'll be using TCP and for v voice over IP and for some video applications, uh, uh, we will use UDP. So of course, so in TCP IP and TCP and UDP are the common protocols which we use uh, in IoT. So then it comes the session layer. The purpose of session layer is to establish and end the connection between two hosts by maintaining a ports and sessions. Okay, for example, we are SSH into uh, any server using port 22. So these kind of things are handled by the session layer. Okay, then it comes the presentation layer. So the presentation layer ensures that the data is in usable format. Okay, so in order to serve the application layer. So and also it takes care of the encryption process. So all these TLS, uh, SSL uh, thing comes under this presentation layer. Okay, then finally it comes the application layer. Okay, so this is the layer where the human and the computer will interact with each other. Where uh, the two web services or two applications will talk to each other. Okay, so uh, using this example MQTT, HTTP, WebSocket. So these are all the uh, web protocols which the application layer will use uh, in order to communicate with the different web services. So just take note of this point. So we'll be talking more about application layer when it comes to web of things okay so so the internet of things makes use of layer 1 to layer 6 with multiple protocol stacks okay so so that's that's just just the definition so it can be any bluetooth stack it can be any uh, zigbee so whatever the protocol it can be so it will work uh, within the layer layer 1 to 6 okay so if you are building some application using bluetooth so there should be a separate gateway for the bluetooth there should be a separate application for the bluetooth uh, in your in order to access the device so when it comes to zigbee it's it's similar okay there is no proper uh, standard so far uh, in order to um, connect or control all these devices from a single interface okay so how we are going to address this issue so uh, so there comes the web of things so i will uh, explain more about web of things in my upcoming slides so in order to understand this scenario in a better way i am going to tell you a story of mr bob so mr bob is thinking of uh, building a smart home okay so he's going to um, a lot of shops he's checking so what are all the smart devices he want for his house so he need a smart lock in order to secure his house so he need a smart lighting system and he need a camera in order to monitor who is coming who is going and all these kind of stuff okay so uh, let's say his um, smart lock is working um, with Bluetooth. Okay, so he need a separate application to control this uh, smart lock. Then his Wi-Fi camera, the camera is working in Wi-Fi, so he need a separate app in order to monitor his uh, camera. Okay, then his uh, smart lighting system, it's working in Zigbee, and he needs separate application to control his uh, smart lighting system. So totally, his mobile is full of separate separate applications. He need to open different different applications each and every time when he want to control it okay so this makes bob very sad so so how we can help bob so how bob can build a better smart home and what kind of solution we can uh, provide him to build a, a, a best smart home which which can operate uh, based on a proper standard so he can just use one application to control whatever he want and he can expand whatever the devices he want in his house also so in future he can add a, 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 thermo, a thermostat uh, so whatever the devices he wish he can just add it easily without uh, spending more money okay so how we can help bob to set up a super easy smart home there comes the web of things so what is web of things let's go
Web of Things is all about making devices accessible over the web using normal web protocols like HTTP, WebSocket, JSON, etc. At the beginning of this video, I just mentioned, just imagine how nice it will be if you can able to browse your devices from your browser just like how you're browsing every day. Okay, so that's the key differentiator um, of a web of things. And that's what it makes web of things uh, easy to build uh, for developers or easy to integrate with any kind of web service or, or web applications. Okay, so your devices uh, can be accessed over the web using normal web protocols uh, agnostic to anything below the application layer. So please note the word agnostic. So web of things doesn't care about uh, what protocol your devices are using. Your device may be using Bluetooth or Zigbee or whatever. It doesn't matter. As an application developer or as a user, you can just focus on uh, building your applications on the top of application layer without worrying about the underlying protocols. So that any devices can be part of the universal web of things regardless of what protocols it uses connects to the internet. So as I said, web of things uh, is working on the application layer. So uh, you're going to build applications or you're going to talk to your uh, devices or you're going to interact with your uh, devices through web technologies like HTTP, MQTT and web sockets. Okay. So web thing description. So this is very important when it comes to uh, web of things. So for example, uh, let's say I'm a human. Okay. I have my own properties. Like I have a unique name. I have a unique address. So where I'm living. So these kind of informations are uh, my metadata uh, which is my own uh, information which no one else will have okay so similarly each device should have its own uh, description okay so what kind of properties it ha it's having so what kind of actions it can do so this kind of information is unique for each device so uh, in web of things uh, every device should have a web thing description so what is a web thing description the web thing description provides a vocabulary for describing physical devices. It can be anything. It can be your smart light. It can be your mixer. It can be your table fan, whatever. Okay. So connected to the world wide web in a machine readable format. So here we are uh, referring to JSON as a machine readable format. So you can see a simple example here. I have a smart lamp. So uh, it's, it's just a lamp uh, before it's going to be smart. Okay. So you can see the ID, title, description properties uh, so the properties of the lamp is on so i can turn it on i can turn it off so i can adjust the brightness those are all some additional properties so this is just for an example so a things description will look like this okay so now my device is having a web thing description how i'm gonna interact with my device there comes the api so what is an api api is a set of rules in order to make programs talk to each other okay so you can build API in any languages which you are good at. So it can be Python, it can be Node.js or whatever the programs you like. Okay. So here we are going to use a REST API and WebSocket API in order to interact with our device. So what is a REST API? A REST API is an API that uses HTTP request to get something, to post something, to put something or to delete something on the server. So in this scenario, let's assume a smart bulb. Okay. So I'm going to change the state of its bulb from off to on. Uh, okay, so I'm going to use uh, put request here in order to change the state of this bulb. So you can see the request here uh, put request HTTP colon slash slash uh, your server slash thing slash pi slash property slash LED. So basically the path can be anything whichever you use during your development and the body is basically LED state as true. Okay, I'm going to send the response as a I'm going to send the request as a JSON and the server is going to respond with 200. Okay, your LED is true once I make the put, put request. Okay, let's say you are building a web application and you want to show the status of this uh, LED instantaneously on your uh, web page on your or on your beautiful dashboard. So, so WebSocket API will be really helpful in this scenario. So, let's say uh, you always want to keep the status of your bulb updated on our dashboard. So you need to use the, the API, something similar, which is on the right side, you can see a message type as a property status and data, the LED true. So this is what uh, your uh, server will always respond when you use WebSocket API uh, to display it on your dashboard uh, instantaneously. Okay, so HTTP verbs in WOT. So there are four uh, common HTTP verbs, uh, which we will be uh, using in our uh, Web of Things development. So which is uh, get, post, put and delete. So if you want to get some uh, sensor data, if you want to read some sensor data, you will be using a get request. And if you want to create a device, so we will be using a post request. And if you want to update the state of an LED or if you want to change the state of a sensor 
or if you want to change the state of an actuator so whatever we will be using put request so uh, i just uh, explained in my previous slide about this uh, put request and if you want to delete a device you will make a delete request so basically this four http verbs are the commonly used uh, uh, http verbs uh, or the rest api request we will be making with this uh, http verbs okay let's come to bob now now bob knows the concept of web of things and let's see how bob is going to build his own smart home using the web technologies so uh, Bob's Bluetooth uh, smart lock is running on uh, Bluetooth protocol and his Wi-Fi uh, camera and uh, his smart lighting system is working on Zigbee. So, so now Bob's uh, devices are exposing its own WebThing API. So uh, Bob knows how to do some simple programming, how to develop a, a simple website. So, so basically he's just using a Raspberry Pi in order to control all his smart home uh, devices. So he's running a server on Raspberry Pi uh, which can be accessed over the URL https colon slash slash bobserver.com slash things okay so so that is a base url uh, uh, you mean the root url uh, of the server so if you want to access his uh, smart log so what he need to do is he just uh, uh, want to go to browser and he need to uh, search for https colon slash slash bobserver.com slash things slash my log so this will respond with the things description so from the things description bob can able to uh, see the properties of the smart log and he can do whatever the lock supports similarly he can uh, stream the camera he can see who is uh, going here and there and he can monitor his house and similarly he can control his uh, smart light uh, whether he can turn it on or he can adjust the brightness so bob know how to build a simple website using html css and javascript so he can able to uh, set up his own smart home by his own all allowed with a uh, low cost and uh, in an easy PC way. Okay, so now Bob is happy with his smart home. So that's how simple it is uh, uh, to develop web of things based solutions. Okay, so web of things always uh, complement Internet of Things and it will make you to develop uh, rapid uh, prototypes and also you can scale it in an enterprise level. So thanks guys, thanks for watching. So if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, let's make the technology easy PC for everyone. Have a good day.